I wonder if I can style these because I don't think I've ever seen a line on the bottom anywhere else like this. Actually, might look better if it was just a regular flat button. Oh, editor lock filter button, let's go. I should be able to use the style of the regular button, I think. I think it's better overall if uh, they're not using their unique style with the line on the bottom. But by default, unpressed, they are styled like just regular buttons, like anywhere else, like in audio, for example. And you can't change that right now because there is no normal state for them. Godot 4 light mapper is pretty good, actually. I should actually make a proper test level with all of the slopes and stuff for the controller. I got myself here a 2 meter cube, 1 meter cube, half meter cube, and uh, some slopes. For the doors, I think I can go with something like 1.2 by 2.2. Actually, this doesn't seem high enough. Made a very basic door. Uh, it's proximity activated for now because there is no interaction yet. And uh, it's made with components. There is a trigger component here and a door component on the door. And they communicate with signals. And as you can see, the path here is relative. So if I were, for example, to copy this door, uh, the trigger inside of it will still have the correct reference to the correct door. One small issue when working with signals in Godot is that when you are connecting to an existing method, it will open the code for it, even though you usually don't need to edit it. But there is a proposal to fix this. Door sounds. So we now also have footstep sounds. And also, as you can see, I added more stuff to properly test the controller. So I now have a separate free camera that I can switch to while the game is running to be able to fly around and see things from the side. Uh, because you see, Godot doesn't actually run the game in editor. It runs it in a separate process. So to be able to do this, you need to implement this yourself. But fortunately, this is not too hard to do. By the way, this label here on the door can show any property on any object. So for example, if I wanted to know the rotation on this door, I could just type uh, rotation degrees here. And that's what it will show. One of the convenient things about GDScript is that you can reference any property with a string uh, without a need for any special API for that. Like for example, reflection in C sharp. Uh, made a very basic flashlight. Uh, it interpolates the rotation a little bit to make it look a little bit more organic. The texture for it is a gradient that I quickly made in Godot. I actually tweeted about this a while ago as well. I think it's really convenient that you can create gradients in Godot. Uh, but for the flashlight specifically, I think I might go for, uh, for a more detailed texture. Opened a couple of pull requests, uh, one for the log buttons and uh, another one for the signal connection problem that I mentioned earlier. The nice thing about open source uh, is that if something is not working, you can just go and try to fix it yourself instead of waiting for it to get fixed. It would have been nice if these error messages also showed what is trying to access these textures, because I could clearly see that they exist right here with my own human eyes. So I'm not quite sure what to do about these. Added some basic controller support. I uh, wanted to test it out early because it's really easy in Godot. You don't really need to do anything special. Uh, and from what I understand, uh, a lot of controllers to support it as well. There is one thing though, uh, Godot currently stores all of the bindings in the project itself. In Unity, for example, you can put those bindings into their own separate file. So if you made a player controller asset for the asset store, you can put some default bindings into that so that people can then drag and drop that into their projects without having to set anything up themselves. So what I had to do in Godot to be able to easily use my player controller in all of my projects uh, was to add a button here to add default actions uh, that just adds actions from a predefined um, resource into the project. 
So the thing about Twitter is that it's really good for small updates like these, especially if you're posting something flashy because it can get noticed easily. But the downside, of course, is that uh, those posts get quickly forgotten and diluted by other stuff that you post. So for somebody who is not on Twitter every day, it's basically impossible to keep track of somebody's progress. So I'm trying this instead. Uh, and uh, yeah, let me know if it's something.